Afri Forum sparked outrage this week when uh, Kali Krill said that apartheid was not a crime against humanity. We're going to be talking to him here on News 24 to find out why exactly are you rewriting history. The United Nations declared the apartheid system a crime against humanity. You came on this week and you said this was not the case. Yes, thank you for the opportunity, ma'am. I, firstly, I just want to say there's no effort from every forum side to re rewrite history. I think what happened, unfortunately, there was a tweet that quoted one specific passage and did not give the context of what I said. So I will gladly give the context. Go for it. Every forum believes in a concept of mutual recognition and respect uh, among people. We believe that people's dignity should be respected. And in our minds, there's no doubt that people's dignity were infringed upon during the apartheid system. Um, so people trying to call us all names that we are in denial and so forth, that is definitely not the case. Uh, what I said, and I said specifically we don't see it as a crime against humanity, the context for that is in 1973 the fact was before the UN and it was during the Cold War era. Uh, what then happened, uh, the, United Nation, uh, the United States ambassador said, um, even though they don't agree with the apartheid system, uh, they said that it should not be seen in the same light as what we saw un under communism where 100 million people were killed um, under those systems, what we saw in Germany where there was six million people sent by Hitler uh, into the gas chambers and what that was the context on that. Um, what we are all in favour of is to say let's be frank about history and speak openly about that. But you're quoting the American ambassador yes. but you're not quoting everybody else that yes. was within the United Nations yeah. leading to that declaration. I mean yeah. why are you being selective on this part? Uh, the context also of that is specifically um, the, the motion was driven by the communist bloc, especially the USSR, and, and they had a communist system and we know what atrocities happened uh, with Lenin and so forth. So that motion was supported by people that were dictators and so forth. And that is a historical fact. And also the other fact is, um, if um, you normally see after what is classified as a crime against humanity, Nuremberg style, um, prosecutions as we saw with the Nazis and so forth um, but we did not see that in South Africa um, if it was today it would be a different case because you now have the Rome statute that came into power in the early uh, 2000s okay. and so forth. Mr. Green, I hear you on that and mm. South Africans chose mm. the Truth and Reconciliation Commission yeah. emphasizing on reconciliation yeah. and perhaps not the prosecutions and I think a lot of people are saying right now perhaps that was not the right mm. way. We should have actually prosecuted. But I just want to say as a matter of principle, if you are describing something that is a crime against humanity, mm. it is when you have an institutionalized regime that is very systematic in oppressing a certain racial mm. group. And that is what happened with South Africa. You're also comparing the numbers of deaths. Mm. In South Africa, we know that they were not documented as maybe mm. as well as what happened with uh, the Jewish massacres or any yeah. other of the massacres. Are you saying that because there were less people killed, therefore this does not qualify as a crime against humanity? Um, or it was a lesser it, crime? Every person that was killed, it is actually uh, something that we should all mourn. Um, nobody should lose their lives or their dignity should be infringed upon. Um, we might disagree in terms of, of the definitions and so forth and the international law that was in place at that stage. Uh, but simply what we are asking is um, we will gladly debate um, as you are doing now with those kind of facts. Um, but what, we, uh, what, what is unfortunate, as soon as you try to have some form of a debate, you are immediately branded as a denialist, somebody that does not care for the suffering of black people and so forth. And that is and the insensitive, best. because it's, it's sensitive. a lot of yeah. South Africans, including myself, are yeah. the victims of that apartheid regime. So you can imagine we are mm. still living through the consequences 
of that institutionalized racist mm. regime. Um, I have respect for that sensitivity, um, but what I believe is quite important um, that we should not have no-nos in our debate and say immediately if somebody say, says something you disagree with, they are immediately seen as somebody that is negative towards black people and so forth. And if you, uh, I want people to, to judge us on our own actions, not how other people portray us. But also what you say, we should judge you by what you say. I'm just wondering yeah. now, is it not hypocritical? On the one hand, you were in the United States, you were mm. claiming that uh, what is the farm murders are genocide, and people in Rwanda who lived through a genocide where close to a million people were actually killed will say, in terms of numbers, you can't call the farm murders genocide. This is actually a criminal uh, 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 element. That is again something that somebody else said about us and not we, what we said. We never in any place um, use the term so-called genocide. Um, what we guide ourselves by is, the, is an organization called Genocide Watch um, that said um, it, this is not genocide in a sense as we've seen in Rwanda, but they said that there are dangerous signs in terms of um, people being able to make uh, derogatory statements and calling minorities derogatory things, such as Julius Malema saying, you know, um, we're not calling for the wholesale, wholesale slaughter of whites, at least not for now. You have him praising a lion that attacks a farmer. You had a former president saying, well, all the problems in the country started when, uh, when uh, my forefathers arrived. Um, you have the current president that said at a, a rally for the election, you have to go and vote, otherwise the Buddha are going to oppress you again. So those are signs that I but think are irresponsible. Yeah. But the fact mm. is, um, um, people are saying things that uh, we never said. And I would then say, judge us by what we do. If you go and look, people say we only um, look at the interests of a certain community. The fact is, um, we're not ashamed by the fact that we take on issues that are of importance to many Afrikaners, but um, we like a woman. A woman can do more than one thing at a time. And judge us by what we're doing at the moment. We are in court at the moment on behalf of kids in Kandla that don't get to school from the KwaZulu-Natal Education Department. We're going to court on behalf of a rural uh, kingdom in Limpopo where the land was abused by um, uh, mining companies. We represent the Dube family to make sure they get justice with regard to the homicide case, uh, uh, culpable homicide case mm -hmm. against Ruzani Zuma. We represent Gabriela Engels. Uh, if we fix potholes, there's not a sign saying, you know, only Afrikaners can drive over this. That is something in the interest of all. Mm -hmm. So there are many things that we do to the benefit of the broader community, and we're proud of that. But unfortunately, the small group of commentators, they put things in our mouths that we uh, don't say, or when we say something with regard to apartheid, they don't give the context. They portray it as if we are saying apartheid was a good system, and we never say that. Okay, I hear you about the work that you are doing mm. where you say it is good, but it is what you are actually saying. I mean, just now this week, there's mm. another issue where Mr. Root basically was calling for academics to be hanged, literally. Again, um, I call on all people to go and watch that video, what he said. He tried to say that you have certain commentators and academia that are not um, in touch with the suffering of normal people on grassroots level. But he said quite clearly that we do not call to harm people. So he tried to uh, portray But when that, you but use a code, when you know what that code represents and what it means, how do you turn around and say you were not meaning any harm to academics? No, because he said quite clearly after he spoke, and people should not listen to what people say about the video, they should watch it themselves and decide for themselves. He stated quite categorically that that's not what he meant. That quote, we must look at, it happened um, in Nazi Germany, yes. where there were academia that uh, did not want to speak openly about the injustices that happened in Nazi Germany. And this person wrote that because those people 
did not recognize the suffering of normal people um, on grassroots level. But he said that to portray that, but he never in any instance said that she should be harmed. He actually said totally the opposite. We will agree to disagree on that one, but let's talk about your recent trip to America. What was, what was the purpose of that trip? That trip, um, um, we know that the South African president said in parliament we should come back and we should not campaign against our own country. Unfortunately, I think there's a problem if the ruling party sees their own interests as the same as those of the country. What we did is a deed of patriotism. Um, in deed of patriotism? It is most definitely a deed of patriotism, and I'll tell you why. If you go and look what happened in places like Cuba, Venezuela and Zimbabwe, when property rights was not respected, it was not simply just one group of property owners that were armed. We know in Zimbabwe today the economy was destroyed. There's a 90 percent unemployment rate. So that is to the detriment of a country. So if we go and speak out and say people, tell the South African government, uh, the ruling party, that this will destroy the economy, we are trying to avert a catastrophe in this country. What catastrophe, Mr. Kirill? I mean, we are at the current moment mm. going through a, a parliamentary process where anybody, yourself, mm. myself, can go and uh, contribute in yeah. terms of what we think should happen to Section 25. And we are not even at a point where a decision has been taken. There's even been extensions to the public submissions. Mm. I mean, what catastrophe are you talking about? This is alarmist. Um, the catastrophe is that the ruling party in December at the National Congress um, adopted the policy to expropriate without compensation. The catastrophe is when the country's president says on various platforms um, we are going to expropriate land without compensation to give it to our people. Well, the our people is already a worrying issue. Is he not the president of everybody? So that is the stated policy um, and we have to to mobilize against that, as is the right of any group to do so. So you're very selective in who you go and see, conservative lawmakers, you choose Fox News with its conservative views that has mm. portrayed the land issue as part of this so-called genocide against white people in South Africa. Um, and you did not correct any of those statements that they have made as a media house. What we unfortunately see, you have uh, people like Adam Obeep calling us Nazis and then making statements that's not true. He says we spoke to um, Front National in, uh, in France and the alternative for Germany in Germany and so forth and we spoke to alt-right groups and so forth. We never did uh, that. Uh, we are a mainstream organization. And uh, you can have your views on Fox News, uh, but they are the biggest. My issue is you channel. not correcting them because we have had uh, statements made by some people from Fox News stating that part of uh, the project on land is part of the so-called genocide against white people. And you did mm. not correct that perception to mm. say that, look, there is a parliamentary process very different to what happened in Zimbabwe mm. where tomorrow it was decided by the president that they're expropriating land without compensation. In this country, which is a constitutional democracy, we are going through a national assembly process. Um, Fox News never referred to genocide and those called, they said what the threat was with regard to land and also mentioned uh, the problem that we have on farm murders in South Africa. And we believe that is an uh, important message to bring across um, because the problem now is people uh, don't react to what we say, they just simply react to who we are. But what we say, farm murders is a real issue. It does not mean we're saying other crime is not a real issue. That is why we have a network of community safety initiatives, more than 100 of them, where all communities are involved in. Uh, in Elliot, we work with the Taxi Association and do patrols together with them. So we recognize the broader problem. But if you have a situation where people are tortured, an electric drill being used to drill holes into an elderly woman's feet, or somebody is tortured with a blow torch, that is something that needs to be addressed. Um, and the, the problem is people are belittling uh, uh, people that suffer under that, and they don't want that message to come through. Is it not because
because you have racialized it, uh, and both the issue of land and also the farm murders, because we have, we are a very violent country, and the crime in this country is very violent. Mm. So, if land is nationalized, I will also lose my little mm. piece of land that I would mm. probably own as a black person, right? Mm. If I am a farmer living in a very isolated area, I would mm. probably also be at similar risk of mm. being attacked because of these criminals that are going for mm. easy targets, people that are in open spaces that do not have access to police readily. The racialization of mm. it, which is what the Fox medias and you guys have done, is part of belittling the problem instead of actually just addressing it. No, we've never racialized the issue. Um, if we speak about the land issue, it was racialized by the deputy president of this country, Mr. Mabuza, when he said whites uh, should give up uh, their land voluntarily uh, to make sure that there's not violence and it will be taken by force. He racialized the, the issue of those kind of remarks. Um, if you look at the motion that was adopted in Parliament and you read the first few paragraphs, it racializes the issue. Because, no, no, um, the mm. issue of land would be racialized from a historic context mm. that it was land that was mm. taken away from original people of South Africa mm. who are of Khoi, black, etc. descent, right? Um, and it was colonizers who moved in. But right now, if we're talking about nationalizing land, there are black people who actually do own land yeah. and are also at risk of losing it. And that is why I'm saying the other project that we're moving to is not necessarily targeted at white people. Well, then you should speak uh, to the deputy president that he should not racialize the issue. As I've said... You, you have not yourself. Well, we've reacted to what he said. Um, um, you know, uh, um, we have to take seriously what uh, government leaders say. Um, we cannot simply just stand back and say, okay, let's just rather ignore it and, uh, and pretend that he never said that. Um, so he has racialized the issue. The fact is, in terms of farm murders, um, in all our documents, um, also in the book um, on farm murders that we took to the US, it, it states that there are also black people that are are suffering under this. 30% of people that die in farm murders um, are black people. So we don't, uh, we put the facts on the table. But what we are worried about specifically, um, we worried about all murders in the country. Um, but I think the fact that you have in 20% of, of farm murders, you have uh, uh, where people are tortured um, and being brutally killed, um, it's one thing to say, well, you tie somebody up to steal or you kill them to steal, which is bad enough. But if you're going to torture somebody for hours, then there is a, a very big problem. And that problem is not helped mm -hmm. by the fact that people are making minorities a scapegoat and making these uh, so-called anti-Africano, uh, anti-white statements. Um, and that is what we are against. Um, but, but we, you do concede that there is no whole, some plan targeted specifically at white farmers. There's not a wholesale murder of people as in what you had in Rwanda or the gassing of people as you had in Nazi Germany and so forth. And that we state quite clearly. Um, and, but we said here are serious dangerous signs um, in Rwanda. Um, it started off by people being called uh, so-called cockroaches. And it actually became acceptable in the, in the discourse in the country to make derogatory statements by people or about people and nobody really took it seriously. And that is why we are saying those same people that criticize us for what we are doing, they should also criticize when Julius Malema says um, these serious uh, things about people, you know, making statements such as um, I don't hate whites, but I specifically just love black people. And um, those kind of statements, we don't hear Adam Abib or El Mindu Plessis or those handful of people that are actually anti afri forum activists portraying themselves as journalists or academia. 
Um, I don't think right? they're portraying themselves as academia because they are academics. But, but I think should, should there has been, actually, but there right? has been criticism of Julius Malema as well. I mean, let's be honest; it has been there, yes. similarly as it should be against you. Yes, but it is not. It is only a few people that speak out, and it's not a national outburst. Um, and that is our problem. We should not have double standards in the country. We're not afraid of criticism. Uh, of course, we would prefer that the criticism is based on what we do, and not on what people think we are. Just as a last question, Mr. Creel. Um, we are clearly still a very divided nation. Mm. Uh, that project of reconciliation mm. is by far nowhere near mm. anything. What is Afri Forum doing in terms of making the cons your constituency, which is white, mm. right? Understand issues of white privilege, understand issues of we need to share the land. What are, what are, what are you doing practically to make sure that you know, the other side, your side, reaches out to the black community as well? Um, what we do specifically, if you look at our local projects um, of our more than 100 branches countrywide, you can go project by project. It is a uh, those are projects that are in, in the ben to the benefit of the community as a well. whole. And I think the one brilliant thing that we are seeing is that there is, the, despite uh, the divisions in the political discourse, that there is a, a strong feeling on local level for people from all communities to, to work together. And we should, um, I want to quote Winston Churchill when he said, we should not confuse published opinion with public opinion. What we experience from the statements made by our BIP and so forth is not what we experience on grassroots level. And we will not be deterred. We will continue to, to cooperate with people as we represented the Dube family, as we represented Gabriela Engels, as we representing the people of Inkandla, as we are representing uh, the kingdom in uh, in Limpopo as we are working uh, with communities across the country to tackle crime, those things we will go ahead and we will not be deterred by false accusations. You know, I always say to our staff members, um, um, with, when we do what we do, when you um, sometimes go against the agenda of of another political grouping, they would try and portray you. The easiest method is to stereotype you, portray you as some kind of a racist and so forth. We cannot stop that from happening. All we can do is to make sure that those accusations are not true. And I can tell you today, South Africa, all from all communities, Afri Forum respects the dignity of all people. We are here to stay. We've been here for more than uh, 360 years. Uh, we're not Europeans. Um, if I go back there, I, st I struggle with the language there. I don't feel at home there. Um, so we want to make sure that uh, this country um, should be built to the benefit of all people. And we also want to extend the hand of friendship to, to say to people, you might dis disagree with us on some issues, um, but if you differ on many issues, it does not hinder you from working together on those uh, common goals. And uh, we are willing to work with anybody. Uh, we are we, we announcing at the Solidarity Movement's Congress today that we want to go into a, a process of the renewal of trust amongst the various communities uh, in this, this country. We also want to engage government um, because it's in none of our interests if we go into a conflict situation. The Zuma years has done a lot of damage uh, to our country. It has created a lot of divisions amongst uh, people and it is now time to correct that. But in correcting that, we, we cannot be silent with regard to burning issues such as farm murders, such as crime as a whole, such as expropriation without compensation. Unfortunately, we ran out of time, but that was Afri Forum's Kali Creel joining us here on News 24.